Welcome to a brand new episode of Close Up with Perry Nemiroff. This one is a big one, because I'm lucky enough to be sitting with the cast of Mean Girls. I will say congratulations, and I am so incredibly excited to see your movie. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, That's Thank so you. sweet. So every episode of Close Up begins with the essentials, which is usually a whole bunch of questions about movie going and your craft, but because we have a big group here, I picked one, and I'll pose it to the whole group, and it's kind of inspired by the idea that there are so many schools out there that are putting on on their own productions of Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah. So for each of you, when you were young, growing up, and maybe first dreaming of becoming an actor, which movie scene would you reenact the most? <gasps> mm. I can start. Go. Um, high School Musical 2, bet on it. That's <laughs> what I would do in my bedroom over and over. And um, you are the music in me from High School Musical 2 uh, as well. So good. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if it's like the scenes that I would, uh, I don't know the specific scene, um, but I, I was a lot of like Austin Powers for me. <laughs> so funny. Which movie? The first one? Um, the one with Beyonce. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I forget the subtitle of that one, but I forget, solid is it choice. Gold Member? Uh, is it Gold Member? I remember that's one with Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll see if I have I wouldn't, I, I don't know. But if, I, if I had to guess, if I had to guess. <laughs> Uh, for me, I would reenact a lot from Dream Girls because there are just a lot of like randomly loud moments in there that's like, Curtis was supposed to love me. And like, <laughs> I would just randomly blurt that out to my sister. We still do it to this day. So, like, I think that's the movie for me. Oh, you came prepared. I like Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's hard because there's like so many games that I would play with my like cousins and stuff growing mm -hmm. up that were sort of like musical and and cinema adjacent. But one thing I would always do alone, I used to walk to school and I'd pretend to be like Jack Skellington, like walking up the hill, you know, in that like very iconic shot of him like walking up the hill and I'd be like traipsing up the hill, like this is my moment. <laughs> you know? He speaks to me more than you know. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, I pretended that I was Matilda a lot. Oh. Oh, I would God. do that. Too. So good. Yeah, just like oh. I wanted to move the cereal box. I wanted to make so things fly around the air. It was just oh, I was an only child, so it's just a lot of You know what my little niece is doing right now? She's busy running around the house being Moana. That's so oh. cool. Thank you. Chris, last up, what you got? Dude, I, I wanted to be Ferris Bueller so bad when I was a kid. Oh, like, wow. yeah. I mean, also like the fourth wall bits, like at the end, I thought that was so funny. Yeah. What are you still doing here? Go, it's over. Go home. Um, yeah. Like the beginning, the monologue he does with the clarinet, because I had a clarinet, and I don't know. That's what I'm gonna be in. You all won that game. Those are perfect answers. <laughs> all right, Mean Girls, full force right now. I think I have a somewhat sensible roadmap here. And Jaquel, it starts with you, because this is your first feature, but I'll just let everyone know you are a Tony Award nominee and a Drama Desk Award winner, amongst yeah. other accolades, yeah. too. But yeah. first feature, so what is something about making a movie that came with a little bit of a learning curve, and how did you overcome those challenges and learn the process? Well, the main thing was performing for an audience of, like, 400-plus, and then now a camera. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm at, like naturally, I'm extra in real life. So to pull it back and, you know, calm down was a lot at first. Mm -hmm. But, of course, I'm with all these pros and these vets around me. So, you know, it was nice to watch them and see how they treated the camera, how they, you know, told the story. And I was mm -hmm. able to, you know, steal a couple things and, you know, use it to, to help Damien, you know, get the message yeah. across. So it was nice watching them. I love asking this question every once in a while. What is a seemingly silly question you had about what it takes to make a movie that you would encourage more up-and-coming actors to have the courage to ask on set. Um, wow, how a... how does lunch work? <laughs> because I will admit the first day I was like, are we just not going to eat? Like, <laughs> we're so still true. filming. I am hungry. Right. What do we? And then they were talking about points and, you know, all this and how that works. And I just kept asking these people, like, so when do we eat, though? Yeah. When does right. the food come to the trailer? I'm no good to nobody if I don't eat, you know? Yeah, so that yeah. was the main question. Don't be afraid to ask. Hunger is a real thing. That's a very good point right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, the next step in my roadmap brings me to you, Chris, because second feature, and this is a big leap, because Dolly Land and Mean Girls are two completely different movies, but is there anything about working with legends like Mary Harron and Sir Ben Kingsley that you found coming in handy when you hit the Mean Girls set? I mean, when you're thrown to the wolves, um, like that, like you're around these people that are not only legends, but like sort of intimidating. Like his, mm. like Tina, for example, absolutely legendary. Not so intimidating face to face, 
Mm. Like she's very easy to talk to. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to talk to Sir Ben, for me at least. But I mean, you, at the end of the day, you do it. And uh, that's a lesson to learn that you, you carry with you, I think, when you, you are forced to. You hold your own and exceed in that movie far beyond what I was imagining. So congratulations on that. And I'm looking Thank forward you. to seeing you crush it in this. <laughs> and Gary, next up on my list here, because I was watching another interview you had done where you were saying you're a really big fan of the 2004 Mean Girls movie, and it was making me wonder, what was your favorite scene in that movie? And now, what is your favorite scene in your own Mean Girls movie, and is it the same? Uh, they're not the same, actually. My favourite scene in Mean Girls 04 is when is is the sort of match cut from Gretchen in the bathroom, um, ranting about Regina, and then we match cut it to her delivering her speech in English class, saying we should all just totally stab Caesar, and I love that because just bringing in like the historical context and like it it felt really meta to me um, when I first watched it. Mm. Uh, my favourite scene in in this version. There are so many I love, but one that I really loved filming was the Winter Talent Show dance. I loved dancing. It was our first week, mm. and it was a it was sort of a bonding experience for us because it it was difficult. We were in these sky high boots and in itchy sequin costumes so and itchy. performing for two hundred backgrounds. So and one hundred and fifty crew. So like it was it was scary, but I I loved it. I loved that sort of adrenaline rush of getting up on stage and doing this ridiculous dance. So mm -hmm. much fun. With that in mind, I'll open this up to the full group. Going into filming, was there a particular scene you all thought was going to be the most challenging to pull off? And then ultimately, was that the toughest of the bunch or did something else catch you by surprise? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I really mm. thought that Winter Talent Show was going to be the most challenging just because those heels are high and we were just going and going and going. But I don't know if it was like adre adrenaline or something, but I was just like living my best life. I could have gone <laughs> for another 15 hours. Yeah. I really could have. Oh my God. I was like, give me a shorter skirt, a ho like taller heels. Like, <laughs> I'm ready to go, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I think, yeah, that one initially I thought was going to be the hardest. I think. Maybe what ended up being the most challenging was Revenge Party or Apex Predator, like one of those big, yeah. big numbers, you know? I, I knew that um, <laughs> I'd Rather Be Me was gonna be difficult and it turned out to be even more difficult because I thought of just singing that song live and then I didn't anticipate the choreography, mm -hmm. which is a, a lot. I'll, I'll throw a follow-up question to you because I was gonna give this to you anyway because one of the one of the shots that really caught my eye in the trailer is, is the one of the two of you in the hallway and there's confetti yes. everywhere. It's just like that to me signals that the choreography and the set pieces in this are going to be just, I don't know, like wildly fun and entertaining and colorful. So yeah. what can you tease about, you know, the challenging choreography and the style of the dances and songs overall that are really gonna excite moviegoers out there? Um, you know, I think the O4 film is so beloved and we truly take like the iconic lines that we all know and love, um, but we also add such beautiful life in dance, in song, in color, in set design, yeah. in individual character styles, individual character um, like s style as far as fashion and makeup, and then we get also into song style and the way that each of us perform our music as well. Like, you know, it, there really is so much diversity to be seen, and I think people are really going to enjoy seeing themselves um, and, and hearing how we really pull that shit off. Yeah. <laughs> Those little glimpses got me so pumped. I cannot wait to see more. Baby, I'll come back your way because you have a really exciting opportunity here because someone in this movie is the person who originated the role of Gretchen on Broadway. So is it safe to assume you and Ashley Park spoke a little bit about the character? What's so funny is I'm literally the only person that has not met her. <laughs> I, I have not met her. Everyone, I, it's actually like, I, I I thought about it a little. I was like, man, that's such a bummer. But like the more and more people ask me if I met her, I'm like, well, damn, the more I hurt. really, I You're just, like, yeah, oh. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, I, I want to meet her though. Like you I'm, totally I'm will. At, at the premiere or yeah. something, like we need to meet. I feel like it's meant to be this way. Yeah. It's upping the hype so much, and when she's everything you hoped for, oh it's gonna God. be the best experience ever. She's so, so talented. She's are also gonna get along so well. Have I'm, you seen Joyride? 
I actually have it. I it's it. so, so good. It's so good. It is so, so good. Fun. Oh my it's god, it's so good. Jordan. She's perfect in it too. All right, Renee, you're up on my list now yeah. because you actually played your character on Broadway. So yeah. whenever someone gets the opportunity to play a character for a new medium and also surrounded by a different ensemble, I feel mm -hmm. like there's opportunity to find new elements of the character. For so sure. is there anything new about your Regina George in this movie compared to your Broadway performance? Absolutely. I think like just inherently like the person that I was at 18, 19 um, doing it is incredibly different than like my 23, now almost like 24 year old self. Um, I'm a very different person now. Uh, I'm, you know, I think like as you, I don't know, maybe like age and go on through life, uh, you rid yourself of certain insecurities and you pick up new ones. And so I think that like inherently I'm going to like wear this character uh, much differently. I also think that like this is just a different medium that I'm actually more comfortable with than stage acting. Like I'm, I don't, I, stage acting st stresses me out. Um, not that this doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is this is more my speed when it comes to like the tiny little itty bitty nuances and like read between the eyes um, kind of thing. I I really appreciate that. Um, I also just think like I don't know, and maybe this is silly, but like my approach to like acting is like kind of not an approach. It's just like all right, this is how I would say it. Mm. So I'm, I'm, feel, I'm pretty much gonna do it that way. That is an approach. It's your approach, and it works Thank for you, it Queen. works for you. So yeah. I love emphasizing the fact that there's a million approaches to acting out there, and it's right if it's yours and it feels true to you. Yeah, I'm like, awesome. I would say it like this. So she's gonna today. All right, I'm gonna pose this question to the group now. Anyone jump in on this? But can someone do the Mean Girls math for me in a sense? How much of this movie is the 2004 movie? How much of it is the Broadway show? Oh, and how much of it is something original that we don't even know is coming our way yet? 33, 33, 33 percent? We're like 20 foot, no. 30, I didn't even know. Like equal, if we think of equal birds. If we think of structure, I think 55% is OG 04. Then I think we add 30%, 35% of music, which feels a little low. Then the rest is magic from Arturo Perez and Samantha Jane. Speaking of that magic, is there anything you could tease about how the movie is gonna give audiences what they already know they love and want more of, and also something new that they don't even know they need from these characters and the story yet? The core of the 04 film is the honesty of it. I think it's just so true to the time, and I think that's why it works so well. Mm. Um, and I think that's the core of our movie, too. So I think yeah. it totally honors both the, you know, 04 version and the musical version. Yeah. Um, it honors it in that I think we're keeping that essence, um, but naturally, you know, it's going to be different just because of the time. It's 2024, it's different. Um, and also all of the actors that, you know, I mean, we're all different. So naturally it, it is going to kind of um, take on a new life. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, the core of the film is very much like the same in that we're, we're honoring the, the past iterations. Sounds like a rock solid balance and a solid math equation to me. I'll end <laughs> with this one question for the group. It's something that made me really excited when I first heard it. What was your first reaction and I guess, what does it mean to you that this movie isn't just going on Paramount Plus? It is getting a theatrical release. We'll be able to see your movie on the big screen. So cool. I think that's exactly how this movie is meant to be watched, mm. especially with its musical elements. Like the fact that, like, even in our trailer, you see that confetti coming at you. Like, it is meant to feel larger than life. We're meant to pay homage to the fact that we yeah. have songs from our original, like, OG Broadway play. Um, and, like, we still have. That's fetch. We still have you go, Glen Coco, but in a way that you've never heard before. Like, it's mm -hmm. so colorful. It is meant to be watched with family and friends and also, like, the younger generation, the way that we grew up with Mean Girls. We hope to reiterate that for another generation. I'm just really glad I get two opportunities now to cut to the confetti scene. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you so much for your time and tell everyone out there that is a wrap on this edition of Close Up with Perry Nemiroff. Catch Mean Girls in theaters on the big screen January 12th.